104.5, the team, your home for New York sports and New York Jets football. Uh, we need some info out of the San Francisco 49ers area. We head right to our guy. He's uh, he's doing uh, the sidelines, the locker rooms. He's everywhere for NinerFans.com. Ryan Sakamoto joins us. Ryan, it's it's Bryce Petty starting for the Jets this week. Are the 49er fans feeling optimistic that they can uh, ruin the Jets weekend? Yeah, I think they're optimistic, but at the same time, they're kind of on the fence on what team to expect on Sundays. You know, the the story of the game for the 49ers is inconsistency. They have to be consistent, and we saw the past few weeks that their defense, defense, especially the run defense, has been coming along, but then you see last week what happened when they gave up three rushing touchdowns, and that just can't happen. So it's kind of like, what team's going to show up on Sunday? And Unfortunately, until the 49ers can prove that they can stop the run, you have to roll with the New York Jets being favored to win this game. And that's definitely a strength the Jets can focus on with Matt Forte, trying to hand him the, off the ball and see if he can get some push up on that offensive line. But when Bryce Penny has to drop back on second and long, third and long, is this going to be a defense that has linebackers and other guys that can get in Bryce Petty's face and really have a nice blitz attack against him? That's another problem that the 49ers have. They don't have any kind of pass rush whatsoever. And let me tell you something, This that can be fixed real quick. And I've been saying this since day one, since training camp. Ronald Blair needs to be starting. Like, he's better than Eric Arms. You know, why he's not playing, I'm not so sure. But he's the team's best front seven player in terms of setting the edge, um, being versatile, and, of course, rushing the passer as a four-technique defensive end. Ryan Sakamoto with us right now. He, uh, he's the man for NinerFans.com. So for Jets fans, the big selling point is, hey, at least we get to see Bryce Petty, find out what his future is. For the Niners, are you guys still looking at, at Colin Kaepernick and deciding whether or not he's going to be the quarterback of the future, or, or is his fate sealed? Is he out of there? Uh, you have to think that it's all but sealed. I mean, he put his sounds a home up for sale. I mean, that has to say something, right? Mm-hmm. So it's listed. So uh, it sounds like maybe – Maybe the organization didn't, you know, uh, close the door on Cap, and maybe Cap closed the door on the organization. Anytime a player requests a trade and all of a sudden has to be returned to the team because no one, the trade didn't go through, and then you hear Kaepernick say that he's excited to play for the 49ers, what kind of player is excited to play for a team <laughs> that he requested a trade from? Right. <laughs> That doesn't no. make sense to me. Ryan, let, let's just be clear. You report, you're in the locker room, you're on the sidelines, NinerFans.com. Not just the fans, not just the players, not just Colin. Nobody wants Colin Kaepernick in, in, in San Francisco anymore. It's hard to say because there are some fans that are Kaepernick loyal and they have, you know, they go back based on what his 2012 or 2013 year. But for the majority, if the, from what I'm gathering, yeah, I think he's on his way out. I think you have to clean house. If I'm the GM, you have to clean house, all right, because – there's nothing to look forward to right now. Like you have Joe Staley, who's a left tackle. I would trade Joe Staley while you can now. He deserves a ring. Trade him to a contender because by the time the 49ers are relevant again and a playoff team, Joe Staley is going to be past his prime anyway. So it's not a perfect storm anymore. So you have to kind of see what you can get with the players and the valuation of the best players you have now. Trade them off. Get some draft picks. Package those draft picks. Move up in the draft. Now you're giving fans a ray of hope that, hey, hey, we're doing something for the future, and this is the the plan of attack that we're going for. This is our three-, five-year vision. This is how we're going to get back to the playoffs. This is how we're going to be relevant again and be, you know, one of the best teams in the NFL. But Sounds a lot like the New York Jets, doesn't it? (laughs) Everything going on, you know, deal veterans for draft picks. A lot of the situation, the New York Jets right here on your home for the Jets, 104.5. The team, Ryan's laying it out. Same things are happening out there on the West Coast involving the 49ers. Now the only guy we haven't brought up is the head coach, Chip Kelly. The Oregon Ducks have made a move to bring in their new coach, Willie Tanker, to run the Ducks. Are you surprised Chip Kelly did not go back to Oregon? And what is his future in San Francisco? No, I'm not surprised at all. I think Chip Kelly really, really wants to stay and stick this out with the 49ers. He signed a contract. I think he's going to honor that contract uh, as long as Balky or whoever the GM allows him to. Uh, You know, Chip Kelly gets a bad rep. Uh, for having a high-paced offense and, and puts the defense in a, at a disadvantage. But let's face it, if you take the team from last year and the team from this year, people are saying, well, oh, it's Jim Tomsuli. He won more games than Chip Kelly. But look at the schedule. And then again, look at 
what the problems were with under Jim Samsula, right? They could move the beat between the 20s, but they couldn't score in the red zone. Well, look at their 49ers red zone efficiency this year. It's, it's pretty damn good. So when you take that into account and look what Chip Kelly has done with the horses that he has, because let's face it, this roster is a college roster, right? I bet you Alabama can probably put up a good fight against uh, the 49ers. <laughs> if they played on Sunday. And I'm not joking. Okay, I'm somewhat joking. <laughs> <laughs> But you know what I'm saying? They yeah. have, this, uh, at the end of the day, it's almost like, hey, look, like, what are they doing? You know. Um, so Chip Kelly is is a good coach. I, I really like Jim O'Neill. Uh, I think he's an aggressive style of coaching uh, style that I really, really that the players really, really love. You have to kind of see, okay, at some point, man, we have to give some of these younger guys a shot to see what we have, so we can better assess our future and know what players can and can't do so we know what to look for in the draft and they're not doing that right now ryan we'll get you out of here on this it's a football friday when you are a football guest with us on a friday you have to make a prediction and with a score give us a prediction 49ers jets what happens this weekend 49ers jets i'd have to say the 49ers win oh gosh you know what i'm gonna go with jets I can't do it. Uh, I'm going to say Jets are going to win this game, and it's going to be a final score of 17 to 16. There it is, Ryan Sakamoto, NinerFans.com. We appreciate your time getting ready for the uh, toilet bowl that will be Niners Jets this weekend. All right. Thank you so much. Appreciate it.